This very primal or instinctual use of the voice and the vibration in the human body for comfort, for expressions of ecstasy, for expressions of pain, has been such an essential mode of expression for as long as human existence. This work entitled Plexus, or the entire show here, is related to this vibrational instinct. Throughout my work for almost 20 years, I've been very occupied with the bell drone, the sinusoidal tones of the sine wave, which likens itself to a certain kind of instrumentation of which the body is also a part. So thinking of the bell tone, the bell drone, and the history of the bell, particularly in many parts of the world that required to have a bell tower to exist as a town, as a center, as a place. But there was also very strong power associations with that bell tower. So not everyone had the permission to just ring the bell, of course, except in the case of fire or emergency or invasion. Then the ordinary person would be able to alert the village that there was approaching danger. Otherwise, it was strictly forbidden. Of course, in the case of social protests, such as if the price of bread would increase or if taxes were too high, there are stories of villagers who were trying to sneak into the bell tower to equally ring the bell to sound the alarm that there's another type of danger approaching. So this type of alert signal from the bell, it's a summoning to collectively become aware but also act upon a situation. When I came into 545, I was immediately struck by the ceiling. It has the appearance of a capsized ship. And that forms a parallel to crises that represent themselves in the form of water, the depletion of water or the excess of water. Water itself also reflecting the transportation, willful and not, of human and non-human resources across the planet. So visually, I wanted to create both a sense that the structure was somehow physically growing or connected to the roof, the way roots are connected to a tree, grasping at the walls or grasping at the roof. There's also a lot of reference to building that potentiality. In 541, each of the four skylights has an open microphone structure that is aimed towards the brass bell horn in the center of the room. In the beginning, when we mapped the sonic character of each of the rooms, I was looking for what we call the resonant frequencies of the rooms. So once we identified the resonant frequencies, I used them to create the sound of a bell tone that is also reflected and amplified in relationship to the open microphones that create a live and very living feedback system that is active and it's changing every day, every hour, depending on who's in the space, what sounds it picks up. So feedback and the state of alarm and the bell tone and the drone, you know, became a very interconnected space for me. They are belonging to the same state of readiness in a way. The composition for 545 is also generative. It's always changing as well. But in 545, I asked vocalists to drone to hum, to embellish it, to offer fractions of melodies based on the resonant frequencies of the room. The horizontal surfaces of the structures in 545 act as surfaces that you can sit on. And in doing so, not only are you becoming immersed in the oral composition, but when a voice comes through your particular seating area, you can feel the presence of that voice physically through your body. I mean, sometimes it goes straight up your bones. I mean, it's really quite a visceral experience. So you are physically connected to that voice, to the sound, to the structures, and to the historical experiences that the work is referencing. the sense of ownership and in instrumentalizing resources, earth resources, human resources, landfill, water itself. 
This constitutes a very important plexus. It's a network that's very complicated, but it sits at the core of the human experience and the agency that we have to hopefully create new networks, new paths to change the situation that we are in now.